Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweeten. the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. It's flavor that tempts hungry appetites. It's flavor that makes us enjoy the foods we eat. And that's why Kraft puts fine flavor at a premium in making parquet margarine, a delicious spread for bread. Parquet's flavor is something you'll want to tell your friends about. It's so fresh, so delicate, so satisfying. You'll find parquet deliciously good as a spread for bread, for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles. And it's wonderfully nourishing, too. Parquet margarine is a splendid source of food energy, one of the best energy foods you can eat. And for good nutrition, Kraft also fortifies parquet margarine. Every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So for flavor to satisfy your family and for the kind of wholesome nourishment they need, serve parquet every day. Head up your shopping list tomorrow with parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. Let us turn now to the busy world of industry and finance. Jubilant last week was eager, bumbling Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, one-time water commissioner and prospective mousetrap tycoon. The reason, he and his partner, Fibber McGee, envisioned a rosy future in a post-war world of mice and millions. Well, time marches on and Gildersleeve forges ahead with plans for the manufacture of McGee's plastic mousetrap. We find him now at dinner discussing those plans with his legal counsel, Judge Hooker. Present also are his niece, Marjorie, and nephew, Leroy. Now, let me give you the picture as I see it, Judge. To begin with, we issue 10,000 shares of stock, McGee and I, at a par value of a dollar a share. Pass the salt, will you? You can reach it. That gives us a startling uh, and a starting capital of 10,000. Now, all... Leroy, pass the salt. Leroy, pass the salt. She didn't say please. I did, too. And anyway, why should I? Pass the salt. Pass it. Here, Marge, salt. Never mind. You're too late. I'll eat it without salt. (laughs) You take it. Here, give me that, Leroy. Uncle Morton, not on my ham. You asked for salt. Confound it. Now eat it. But not on my ham. The ham was salty already. I wanted it on my... Eat it. Mm. Eat God. I'm trying to talk business with a judge here. I'm sorry, Judge. Continue. I wasn't saying anything, Gildy. It was you. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I'll go back. To begin with, McGee and I issue 10,000 shares of stock. Excuse me, please. Yes? Before you begin, if Marjorie's through with the salt there... Give him the salt. <laughs> Judge Leroy, you don't have to grab. Quiet. Now, if you're listening, Judge. I'm listening, Gildy. Continue. I always like a little salt on my spinach. I always like a little quiet when I'm talking. (laughs) You're always talking. (laughs) Leroy. Proceed, Gildy. I forgot where I was now. Well, you were cooking up some shady stock deal. Oh, yes. Well, to begin with, what do you mean, shady? (laughs) This is all open and above board, Judge. We simply issue 10,000 shares of common, ordinary stock, which gives us a working capital... Excuse me. What is it, Bertie? How about a little more of the corn pudding for the judge? Pudding, judge? Well, I'll tell you, Bertie, I shouldn't eat any more, but by golly, I'm going to. It's simply delicious. Yes, sir, it sure is. Shoot the jam, Marge. Leroy, that's no way to ask. (laughs) Sorry. Pretty fair one. Woods past the raspberry jam. (laughs) Uh, Marjorie? Thank you, sister dear. You're welcome, brother dear, and may it choke you. <laughs> Sweet kid. No, no, no. Leroy, a little more corn pudding for you? Not for me, Bertie. I got only a little of it left here. Ain't you gonna help finish it up? No, thanks, Bertie. I can't stand the stuff. Leroy, is that any way to talk about something Bertie has worked hard on? Well, it's squishy. 
I can't stand anything squishy. <laughs> I've told you, young man, not to criticize your food. Give him another helping, Bertie. Oh, oh. oh Mr. Gillespie, if the boy don't want Give it, I... him another helping. According to modern education, Gildy, you're all wrong and Let's forcing. keep modern education out of this, Judge. Give the boy another helping, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Leroy. I'm telling you, I can't eat it. You'll either eat it or go to bed. Oh, I'll go to bed. No, you won't. You'll eat it. <laughs> Yes, sir. A little corn pudding never hurt anybody. I ate corn pudding when I was your age. Didn't like it particularly, but I ate it. Corn pudding is good for you, Leroy. Builds you up. Vitamins. All right, you don't have to eat it if you don't want to. Ah, uh, thanks, Unc. Hey, guess who's back in town? Who? Marge knows, don't you, Marge? If you're referring to Everett Todd, I can't stand him. Oh, you can't, eh? No, I can't. Everett Todd is a mole. Yeah, a what? A mole. He's a drip. Mole? Well, that's a new one. You mean Ainsworth's Todd's boy? Yeah, Everett. I thought he went to military school. He did, but the Army took it over. So now he's back in high school. <laughs> he ought to be in reform school. Yep. Oh, no. He can't be that bad, Marjorie. His father's president of the First National Bank. We all know that, Judge. But what difference does it make? The boy is plainly a mole. And so is his old man. I can never stand him either. Thank you, Uncle Mort. Never had any use for Ainsworth. I haven't any use for his son. I don't want him hanging around my niece. Now, Gildy, you don't know anything about the boy. He's a mole, Judge. <laughs> he threatened to come over this evening. If he does, I shall just refuse to see him. If he does, I shall throw him out on his ear. <laughs> Boy, I hope he comes. Why? You haven't seen him lately. He's got a good six inches over you, Uncle. Finish your dinner, Leroy. The judge and I have business. I'm finished. Eat some corn pudding. What? Eat it. Okay. Miss Marjane in here? Uh, no, she's up in the room doing her homework. Oh, there's a young Mr. Todd at the door to see her. Todd? That must be Ainsworth's boy. Well, by George, I'll tell him where Now, he... wait a minute, Gildy, wait a minute. Have the young men wait, Bertie. You know, I've been thinking. What? I wouldn't be too hasty about throwing young Todd out of the house. You may want to borrow money from his father's bank. Borrow from Ainsworth Todd? That stuffed shirt? I never borrow a nickel from him. I'd sooner raise the money myself. By George, I will raise it myself. How? I don't know. Todd isn't a bad fellow. He's got the only bank in Summerfield. Monopoly. Oh, you're talking like a baby, Throckmorton. What on earth have you got against Todd? Well, he threw me out of his office once, if you must know. What for? We had a disagreement. I may have called him a crook in the heat of the argument. Huh. <laughs> well, you better see if you can get back in his good graces. If he's against you, you won't get credit anywhere in town. Oh? Hmm. Maybe you're right, Judge. I've got to be going now. But uh, think it over, Gilday. Yeah. Uh, Bertie, I'll speak to the young man myself. Yes, sir. Good night, Judge. Good night. Well, 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 my boy. Gildersleeve is my name. Well, how do you do, sir? So you've come to see Marjorie. Well, yes, sir. That is if she's in. Oh, she's expecting you, all right. Yes, indeed. Come right in. Oh, uh, Marjorie. Yes, Uncle Lord? Better hurry down, my dear. Someone to see you. Who is it? Never you mind. <laughs> we'll surprise her. <laughs> well, let me have your head. Uh, come in and sit down. I remember your father. Remember him well. Did you call me Uncle Moore? You have a visitor, my dear. I have? Oh, hello. Uh, hello, Marjorie. How are you? I thought you were kidding when you said you might come over. I've got an awful lot of homework to do. Oh, gee. I'm terribly sorry, but I'll have to ask you to excuse me. Now, Marjorie, you can relax for a few minutes. Bad for your eyes to keep studying all evening. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty warm lately, hasn't it, Marjorie? Yes, it has. <laughs> Quite unseasonable. Um, I, I guess it'll be getting colder pretty soon, though. Huh, Marge? Think so, Marge? Oh, I suppose so. Uh, uh, Marjorie, do you like Wedgie Arcola's music? Oh, it's all right, I guess. Oh, I think he's murder. His whole band's murder, but but he's really mur murder. I, I think he plays more trumpet than Harry James. I wouldn't know. You don't happen to have Wedgie's record of Is You Is or Is You Ain't, do you? No, I haven't. Well, I just happen to have it with me. I mean, out in the car. 
If you'd like to hear it. He plays an awful lot of trumpet in that record. Is that so? Uh, by the way, how's your father these days? Uh, would you like to hear the record, Marjorie? I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, sure she would. So would I. Well, swell. <laughs> and it'll only take a second. Oh, uh, and look out for the hat rack. <laughs> I'll leave the latch off. Be right back. <sighs> Marjorie. You're not being very polite to your young friend. Uncle Mort, I told you I didn't want to see him. He's a mole. Yeah. Now, my dear, that's just your opinion. Oh, no, it isn't. You said so yourself. You said you didn't like him. I don't even know him. I need money from his father's bank to finance our company, my dear. And I can't have you insulting this boy. Oh. Uh, just be friendly, can't you? I suppose you want me to let him kiss me. If he tries it, I'll break his neck. <laughs> All I want is ordinary courtesy, my dear. Just be friendly. Because if you're friendly, he'll be friendly. And if he's friendly, maybe his father will be friendly. <laughs> the tight one. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you... Oh, hello, my boy. Uh, got the record, I see. Yes. Uh, what's his first name, my dear? Um, uh, the phonograph is over here, Everett. Yes, right over here, Everett. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hey, I sure hope you'll, you're going to like this, Marjorie. I'm sure she will. I, uh, heard his record of Blue Lagoon, and I thought it was awfully good. Oh, that one? After he made it, he fired his whole rhythm section. The new guys are much better. Uh, how's your father these days, Everett? Is the needle hot yet? I guess he's all right. <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, nothing like a little jazz. <laughs> That's wedgy, Mr. Gildersleeve. Some tone, huh? Great. I always liked the cornet. It's a trumpet. Trumpet. Oh, well, it's hard to tell which is which. Quiet. How can we hear it? Oh, sorry. You think the fellow is Toscanini or Tchaikovsky? And that's the end of the solo. That trumpet's really murder, isn't it? It suggests murder. <laughs> <laughs> Arcola first started, he was a piano player. He didn't switch to the trumpet till later. Well, that happens. Uh, by the way, Everett, uh, what was your father before he became a banker? Oh, I guess he was always a banker. Uh, I guess he's pretty good at it, too. Knows who to lend money to. Knows a reliable man when he sees one. Yeah, I suppose so. I never thought much about it. Uh... <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> what are you doing down here in your pajamas? For corn's sake, I couldn't sleep. What was all that racket? Racket? That Wedgie Arcola's latest record. Arcola? Oh, boy, play it again, huh? He's super. Why not? Just the trumpet solo, Everett. You belong in bed, young man. Oh, just let me hear it this once. Roll them, Everett. They're rolling. Uh, what'd you say the name of the piece was? Quiet, I want to hear the trumpet. They can hear it across the street. Anybody gets paid for stuff like that, I can't imagine. Yep. Is you is or is you ain't my baby? A uh, little ungrammatical, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, that Arcola is really super. Go to bed, Leroy. But it's only 10.30. I don't care. It's time you were in bed. Besides, it's 10.45. It's 10.40. Stop quibbling and go to bed. Gosh, you never want me to have any fun. <laughs> Hates to go to bed, the little rascal. Now, uh, what were we talking about, Everett? Oh, we were talking about your father. Uh, no, no, about Wedgie Arcola. But, gee, I ought to be going home. Stick around. It's only 11. No, no, gee, I gotta go. Well, now that you know the way... I'd like to come and see Marjorie oh, again. Oh, I hope if... you will. That's the way, my dear. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Well, it's sure great to meet people that are interested in good music. I'm afraid Mr. Gildersleeve isn't quite as sold on Wedgie as I am. Don't but... you believe it, my boy. I'm crazy about Wedgie. Really, Uncle Mort? I think he's great. Is you is, oh, is you ain't, my baby. Oh, gosh. Mr. Gildersleeve, as long as you're getting to be such a fan, how'd it be if we played it once more? J just the solo part. Oh, sure. Love to hear it. Come on, Everett. I love every note of that thing. <laughs> It'll take more than 10000 to pay me for this. More than twenty. My George, there isn't enough money in the whole bank. Yeah, that's murder. Oh, it sure is. 
Well, good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, Marjorie. I'll leave the record for you. Only take good care of it, huh? Good night. Yeah, good night, my boy. Oh, and uh, give my regards to your father. Now, for Pete's sake, let's go to bed. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Now, three ways you can help yourself and help the dealer who supplies you with parquet margarine, the delicious craft quality spread for bread. First, to save valuable shopping time, know the point value of rationed foods. Parquet margarine, by the way, still requires only two ration points a pound. Second, plan menus a week in advance and serve the most nourishing foods available. And, of course, serve economical parquet margarine as often as you can. It's such a splendid energy food and is fortified by craft so that every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. And now a third important point. To conserve paper vitally needed in the war, avoid useless wrapping. Don't ask your dealer to wrap packaged foods. And that means the attractive yellow and blue package, too. Yes, the one that contains that delicious nourishing spread for bread... Parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Tomorrow, buy Parquet, made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Several days have passed since we last saw him, and though he hasn't yet been able to see Mr. Ainsworth Todd of the Summerfield First National, his hopes are high. At the moment, we find him at home, enjoying the comforts thereof. Oh, that thing again. I can't stand this. So he leaves home and seeks refuge down at the drugstore with his old friend, Mr. Pete. I can help for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I don't care how hot it gets, Peavy, as long as it's quiet. That's one thing I'll say for this place. It's quiet. Sometimes it's... Too quiet. Something I can do for you? No, I'd just like to sit here and enjoy a little peace, if you don't mind. A uh, little hullabaloo at home? Hullabaloo. It's a madhouse. Every evening, all evening long, is you is or is you ain't my baby. <laughs> I can't get the darn thing out of my head. Yeah, I know how it is. Reminds me of a tune when I was a boy. Drove father crazy. That must have been 45 years ago, but I still catch myself humming it. Let's see, how did it go now? Never mind. Dun, 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 Let it go. Dun, 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 I'll be more careful in the future. Yes, sir, I believe we still have a record of that on our music box. Music box? You still have a music box? Oh, yes. The modern type, of course, with the flat metal record. The modern type, yes. I thought some last Christmas of trading it in on a phonograph. Thought maybe Mrs. Peavy might like it. But then I decided to wait until they get the thing perfected. It's just... Well... Maybe you're better off with the music box at that, Peavy. At least you won't run into an is you is or is you ain't my baby. <laughs> oh, dear. By George, Peavy, have you ever stopped to ask yourself what the younger generation is coming to? No, I haven't. What are they coming to, Mr. Gillespie? I don't know. But I don't want to be around when it arrives, I'll tell you that. <laughs> is you is or is you ain't. I'll tell you one thing, they'll come to no good. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. Huh? <laughs> well, take your children. Now, Marjorie, she comes in here after school sometimes. Yes. And the boys crowd around her, maybe two or three of them, and offer to buy her a soda. Oh, how does she handle it? Well, I don't know how she does it, but she does. <laughs> By George, she's pretty cute, isn't she? Yes, and the boys seem to think so, too. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Going to be a problem. Heck, it is a problem. She was in here yesterday with that Todd boy, the banker's son. Oh, him. <laughs> That's nothing to worry about, Peavy. She can't stand him. Well, yeah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Peavy, I know all about it. She's being nice to him. But she's doing that because I asked her to. You asked her to? Uh-huh. You see, uh, 
Well, I can't stand the kid either, but his father is president of the bank. Oh. <laughs> McGee and I are planning to negotiate a little loan so we can go into production. The mousetrap. Yeah, the mousetrap. Mm. <laughs> I have an appointment at the bank tomorrow morning, Peavy, so I can just hold on to myself and keep my temper to Lynn, and Marge, we can keep hers. We'll get what we need, and we can give Junior the old heave-ho then. <laughs> Pretty foxy, eh, Peavy? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, do you ever have trouble sleeping night? No, why? What do you mean? That's just good business, Peavy. You know Todd will do the same thing. Can't trust those fellas. I only asked the girl to be a little polite to the kid, for goodness sake. There's nothing wrong in that. Oh, good night, Peavy. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Todd in? Uh, Gildersleeve is my name. I have an appointment. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right through there, please. Uh, Mr. Todd, uh, remember me? Gildersleeve? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Come in. I'm afraid I'm a little early. That's all right. I've been here since 8.30. Sit down. Uh, thank you. Uh... <laughs> I guess you have to get up pretty early in the morning to get ahead of the First National Bank of Summerfield. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, we're all a little busy these days. Uh, by the way, we've been seeing a good deal of your son lately. Fine lad, fine lad. Uh, perhaps he's mentioned me. Not that I recall. Oh, he hasn't. <laughs> Was there something you wanted to see me about, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes, there is. <clears throat> Mr. Todd, you're a banker, right? I like to think so. I guess we all know what bankers are in business for, to make a little money, right? The First National is interested in any legitimate proposition. Then you've come to the right place. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Todd, I'd like a loan of $10,000. You would? Well, may I ask the purpose of this loan? The purpose is to build a factory. And what, may I ask, is this factory going to manufacture? None of your business. It... Well, you can't expect a loan if you don't tell us what you're going to manufacture. If I tell you, how do I know you won't steal the idea and make it yourself? Mr. Gildersleeve, the First National of Summerfield is a banking institution, pure and simple. We do no manufacturing and no selling. Neither do we wash windows. I noticed that. Um... You... Well, you're, you're in business, aren't you? Let us say, rather, that we're engaged in public service. Well, you can say it, but I don't know who'll believe it, brother. <laughs> Here I come in with a perfectly good invention that all it needs is a little money to get it started. And what kind of a reception do I get? Mr. Gildersleeve, if you would be so very kind as to tell me what your invention is, perhaps we could then sit down and discuss this matter reasonably. All right, I'll tell you. Certainly, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is. It's a mousetrap. It's a... a mousetrap? Yeah, and a darn good one. Mr. Gildersleeve. I am a very busy man. Good day. Listen, Todd, you can't treat me like this. I'm a depositor in this bank. I was just about to mention that. Well, I withdraw my account. It has just been brought to my attention, Gildersleeve, that your account has been overdrawn. Nevertheless, I withdraw it. In the future, you can withdraw your son from my power if I don't kick him out first. <laughs> Sir, I guess I told him. I'll tell that smart alley kid, too. Teach him to park his car across my driveway. Oh! Marjorie! Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll deal with you in a moment, young man. <laughs> Marjorie, will you come with me, please? Here, into my study. You wait right where you are, Everett. Now, young lady, was that impudent young scoundrel kissing you, or was he not? I don't know. He had his arms around you, didn't he? Sort of. He hadn't actually kissed you? Not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? He either kissed you or he didn't. Well, he... He tried to kiss me, but he missed. <laughs> oh, I see. I might have known he'd be that kind of a boy who'd pull something like that. I knew he was a sneak the first minute I lay eyes on him. He's not a sneak. Oh, yes, he is. He's a sneak, and so is his father. And by George, I'm going to kick him right out of this house, and right now. Wait a minute, Uncle Mort, it wasn't his fault. Of course it was his fault. It's always the boy's fault. I tried to get him to kiss me. Marjorie, do you know what you're saying? I tried to Don't get him. Don't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> My little niece, 
I knew the time would be coming soon when we'd have to face this kind of thing. Oh, Uncle Mort, it's not so serious. Not so... Sit down, my dear. Look at me, not off at the bookcase. Now, this is serious, my dear. A girl's first kiss is something very special. It should mean a great deal. But I had my first kiss two years ago. (laughs) Jerry Nesmith. He kissed me in the cloakroom in junior high school. Oh, he did, eh? Well, from now on, I want your kisses to be something sacred, Marjorie. I want you to start saving them for the man you're going to marry. But I don't know who that is. You... (laughs) You'll know when you meet him. When the right man comes along, you'll know. How? Well, you just know, that's all. It'll feel like spring in your heart, my dear. You'll find yourself thinking about him all the time. You'll be unhappy when he's not around. You'll spend all day looking forward to the moment when you'll see him. And when you're with him, you'll feel like singing. Is that the way it is? That's love, my dear, when the right man comes along. That's exactly the way I felt ever since Tuesday. Oh! (laughs) That's ridiculous. You're much too young. You're just a child. Yesterday I saw his face in my English literature book, just as clear. Marjorie, this is nonsense. Last night I felt like singing when I saw him coming up the front steps. This has gone far enough, young lady. You send this boy home instantly. But Uncle Morris! I forbid you to see him again. But why? I'll not have kissing going on at your age. Will you send him home? No, I won't. Marjorie, have you no regard for my wishes? But, Uncle Mort, this whole thing was your idea in the first place. Well, I... Uh, uh, huh? Oh. Yeah, I only wanted you to be friendly. Well, I was. Can I help it if I like him? Liking him is one thing, and kissing and cuddling is something else. I won't have it. Well, can we be just friends? Can I trust you? <laughs> sure. We'll just talk and have fun like we did before. Well, we can try it. But the first time I see a sign of any monkey business... Oh, Uncle Mort, you're a darling. Now, Marjorie... You're the sweetest uncle that ever lived. Uh, uh, now, why did I do that? Well, we're only young once, I guess. Probably just as well, too. Oh, this could go on for years. Oh, yes, Leroy? What happened? Boy, did I have fun with Ethel Hammerschlag. What? <laughs> you and Ethel Hammerschlag? Yeah, in the cloakroom. Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, what did... Me and Piggy put a live frog in a lunchbox. Boy, was she surprised. <laughs> Very good, my boy. And I mean, don't ever do it again. <laughs> you had a little leave. Good night, everybody. <laughs> The program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Why is it that meat roast, so appetizing at dinner, often tastes a little flat when you serve it cold? Well, the reason is meat, in cooling, loses flavor. So the natural thing to do is add more flavor. And that's where Kraft prepared mustards brightly step into the picture to liven foods with their tangy, tempting flavors. Remember, there are two popular Kraft mustards, a mild-flavored golden Kraft salad mustard and a sharper Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added. They're both grand flavor treats in sandwiches and on hot dogs and cold cuts. Delicious, too, in many other appetizing ways. For example, Kraft Salad Mustard adds a sparkling flavor tang to deviled eggs, relishes, appetizers, salad dressings, cheese fondues, and Welsh rabbits. And Kraft Horseradish Mustard is really scrumptious in a zippy sauce for fish. So for flavor variety, buy both kinds. Nippy Kraft Horseradish Mustard and tangy golden Kraft Salad Mustard. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.